return now to our top story. That's the upcoming election in Afghanistan on Saturday. Between threats of election violence and allegations of fraud, it is little wonder Afghan voters haven't been won over by the changes that the politicians are promising. As Al Jazeera's James Bays found in the streets of Kabul, many are skeptical about the prospects of democracy. As the election campaign has been drawing to a close in recent days, Afghan and international officials have been sidestepping questions about possible fraud and instead talking about Afghans embracing democracy. Go just look at the streets and see how courageously candidates are actually candidating themselves. It's not about fraud though, it is about letting the honest people have the magic of feeling that they have a say in the governance of their country. But how true is that? We took to the streets of Kabul to find out what Afghans really think about these elections and about democracy in general. As campaign vehicles drove past, carpenter Mir Ghaffour watched from the shop he's run for 51 years. I am illiterate and the idea of democracy does not make sense to me. We don't understand democracy yet. Perhaps it's not practical in Afghanistan because people are poor and no one cares about the poor people. Further up the road, in the shadow of the ruins of the former royal residence, the Dalaman Palace, Naveed runs a makeshift gas station. He earns on average six dollars a day. People around me say they will not vote. They do not want to share responsibility for the mistakes that are bound to be made. It's clear that many Afghans have not only lost faith in the Karzai government and the involvement of the West in their country, there are some that question the benefits of democracy itself. A key figure to look at will be the turnout in this election. How many Afghans take the risk to go and cast their vote? James Bay's Al Jazeera, Kabul. Well, let's get more now on the issue of a possible fraud ahead of the poll. And for that, I'm joined by former Afghan diplomat, diplomat rather, Masood Aziz. He was a senior political advisor to the Afghan Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mr. Aziz, thank you very much uh, for joining us here in the studio. Um, don't need to tell you, I mean, Afghanistan has a history of election fraud, everything from ballot stuffing to uh, proxy voting. Why should Afghans or the international community, for that matter, think that it's going to be any different this time around? Indeed, uh, there is really not a lot of hope that this will be different in terms of less fraudulent. You know, the UN and Afghan government have, are trying uh, to have a less fraudulent election, but there is no there's there's no uh, reason to think that it's going to be less fraudulent. Uh, Afghanistan has not had uh, a lot of history in elections. Just the past election itself the presidential election highlighted really the fraud and uh, fraudulent mm -hmm. ballots uh, and stuffing the ballots, the non-existing uh, votes that were created. So, But is it any more robust, I mean, in terms of the lessons that have been learned from the, from the last election? It, it, have any I sort of say preventative, I preventative measures been put in place? Right. I wouldn't say that it's more robust this time. In fact, uh, about a thousand ballots were closed because of security issues. And because this is a parliamentary election, there's a lot more candidates, 2,500 2, candidates. And so there's more, in fact, chances of having fraudulent elections. So the issue here is that both the international community and the Afghan government are rushing into these elections. And as you know, elections do not make democracy and stability because the rest of, uh, risk, uh, the, rest of the infrastructure in Afghanistan is missing. And that's one of the disappointments both in the West and the international community in not pursuing building those institutions. So you're sort of saying in a way that the process of holding the election, uh, like the idea of perhaps having talks about talks in the Middle East, it's become about the, the process itself that you can sort of show, you know, sort of tout the fact that so-called democratic elections are happening in, a, in Afghanistan when in fact they probably don't lead to very big changes in, in terms of how it affects the lives of the average Afghan That's right. citizen. That's exactly what I'm saying. Not only that, but I would go but even... But what do you think about that? I mean, isn't that I would, isn't e that I would go even w one step further. In fact, the past, the past election and this election is not only uh, showing that elections do not make democracy, but there is a huge risk now that we actually are going completely counter to the strategy we have in place. And that is, for example, protecting the population and gaining their trust. In fact, the elections 
uh, that are happening are losing the trust of the Afghan people, not only in their government, but also in the international community. So we are actually creating space between the Afghan people. Well, I'm sure there are lots of other things that uh, ordinary Afghans are frustrated by. It's not just the election process and the promise of democracy. Uh, I mean, corruption, for example, in the Afghan right. government is a, is a well, huge problem too. But let, let, me, let me just sort of ask you, I mean, if you sort of paint this scenario, why should Afghans turn out to vote at all? It, it, that's a, a very good question. In fact, Afghans turned out, 75% of it turned out to vote in 2004. There's a lot of hope. People might not have known all the candidates, but they wanted to reconstruct their, their country. In fact, the good news is that a lot of, a lot of people do wanted to, wanted to vote. And in fact, in this election, 500 women are, are representing themselves. Those are good things. But the issue of corruption, fraud in the elections, and the losing of the trust of both the government and the international community is what is going to be highlighted in these elections. And what I would propose is slowing down on the elections but building institutions. This is an opportunity to focus now because we're going to have so a do review. do you think that this election should be postponed? And I want to kind of relate it to... No. Uh, 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 but let me also ask you, Al Jazeera has uh, uncovered a massive ra uh, racket and sophisticated uh, of fake voter ballots. Um, is the government investigating that? And wouldn't it be sensible um, to put the election on hold while, at least while those allegations are investigated? At this point, the elections are not going to be put on hold. What I would be uh, advocating for is that this is too late to actually put this election on hold, is that post this, there's going to be an opportunity to slow down the schedule of elections, to build the institutions that we have not built, the international community particularly, not investing in institutionals in, of justice, of uh, government and governance, and of uh, law enforcement, so that the next election really means something and contributes to stability instead of instability. All right, Masood Aziz, thank you very much uh, for thank coming you. in and talking with us.